Please be seated. We've come to the 50th and final day of Easter time. Easter is not just this one great day of celebration, but it spans these many, many days. And it might seem like a long time ago that we were here with the lilies and in our Easter finest, but um, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> Fifty days ago on Easter Sunday, I gave a dollar bill to everyone. Well, actually, to be clear, I didn't give it to everyone. Um, a dollar bill was given to everyone who was here, and um, what I said to um, all who were here on Easter is, be a part of the Easter celebration. Don't just, don't just celebrate Easter passively, but be a part of Easter grace and of the surprise that is Easter. And so today, we're going to hear about how people lived into that. Today we have some witnesses. I want you to come forward as I continue to explain this. Today we have some folks who are willing to tell the story of what they did with their Easter dog. Now as they come forward, I will just remind you or tell you if you weren't here that the charge with this was this. Take this dollar, find someone where the spirit moves you, give the dollar to that person and wish him or her a happy Easter. Or if that's not quite your tradition, and actually you'll hear from one testimony that that wasn't quite her tradition, still wish them well and see what happens. Well, so here on the feast day of Pentecost, it's about the spirit and about doing things as Jesus has commanded us to do. We're going to hear what happened. Good morning, everyone. So on Easter morning, I did what I usually do after church. I took my dog, Rody, for a walk. Now, Rody's a mutt. She's super energetic, super social. She wants to say hi to everyone which usually includes jumping up on people to give them a lick. She's kind of like my brother in that way. <laughs> well, I'm not the licking part. <laughs> you guys know Rob, right? Three, three amigos. Rob, is that good? <laughs> Rob's super social, too. Chances are he's come to you during the piece at one time or another. I love how outgoing Rob is. But me, I'm more of an introvert. And that can present challenges when your dog is a social butterfly. Uh -huh. Rody's always pulling me toward uh -huh. people, and I'm usually pulling back. Partly because I don't want her to maul someone, but also because honestly, that's where my comfort zone is. So on Easter morning, when I saw a middle-aged guy walking toward us at a brisk pace, I veered to the side of the road to give him a wide berth. Then I remember the dollar bill in my pocket. I'm supposed to give it to someone. Tim Rich, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I shortened up my roadie's leash and I veered back into the middle of the road. And when the guy was within 10 feet of me, I said, Hey, you got a second? Now, roadie's tail is wagging like mad and she's straining against the leash collar to give this guy her love for you. And I'm thinking he's going to go from a walker to a runner real fast. <laughs> but he doesn't. He stops and he says, what's up? I just came from the church, I thought. The priest gave us all a dollar bill and asked that we pass it on to someone. So I want to give mine to you. I hand him the dollar bill and I wish him that he Wow, he says, surprised. His face softens. He smiles. So we go our separate ways, and as the guy walks on, I'm pretty sure I see a skip in his step that I didn't detect before. I notice the same thing about myself. Of course, one of you has a skip in her step. So that's my story. Two strangers, a dollar bill, a chance meeting in the middle of the street, an Easter Sunday moment, courtesy of St. Luke's, and really, Jesus. Wait a minute, you're all good.
by the Capitol and the Supreme Court building on our way down the train station to take a duck boat cruise. And um, I see this older gentleman on crutches coming up the uh, steep street. And as I pass him, there was a smile and a glow. And as soon as I got past him, I realized, um, gee, is this the person I'm supposed to give the dollar to? So I went through the debate of should I do it or should I not? And I said, God tell me this is the person. So I turned around and I caught up to him and I said, I have something from you related to Easter present. And I gave him a dollar. I got the greatest smile and thank you I think I've ever received. It was very precious. Thank you. When we were giving the assignment to give away a dollar um, and wish them happy Easter, I had to confess I was a little snug about it. You see, I came to Boston every week today. There are plenty of opportunities to just place money in a change fund. In fact, asking for money is somewhat of a cottage industry in and around South Station, where I pass through twice a day. This will be easy, I thought. I've got this. No awkward out of contact encounter in a sur suburban Target store or Green Street is kind of Still, on the Monday after Easter, I was a bit nervous as I made my way up from the subway on my way home. All these thoughts were running through my head. The assignment was to wish them a happy Easter. Who does that on the day after Easter? It's not like it's Christmas or something. Will I count if I don't wish them happy Easter? Will they think it's some sort of passive aggressive way to point out how benevolent my religion is? Or even worse, will I thought to myself, will my Easter greeting welcome me to Jehovah's Witnesses who find both sides of the passageway as you exit the turnstiles? And what if one of the regulars is that we need to spot that day? They strategically place themselves where everyone bottlenecks to get up the escalators into the station. Am I now going to have to give them a dollar every day? I can't make a point of giving to them on Easter and then just pass them by every other day. What is this dollar from Father Tiffany? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 52 weeks a year, and it's two weeks vacation, that's 50 weeks, so that's easy math. Five dollars a week times 50, that's $250. Thanks. As I rounded the corner, I was relieved to see it was not one of the regulars that day. So I'm bold, and I pulled out the dollar bill, I placed it into the man's cup, and I said to him, I hope you had a nice Easter. He looked back at me, and with the biggest smile, of genuine gratitude, he said, I sure did. I had a real good meal. In that moment, I realized how lame my attitude had been about this beautiful assignment, thinking only of my feelings and how I could minimize my discomfort. A good meal on Easter filled this man with gratitude. He could see it in his eyes as a smile. He was the one who got the Easter message right. I was just being self involved. Funny how the scales can fall from your eyes so quickly. This man's dignity and gratitude changed my heart in an instant. Give it and it shall be given. A good meal and a dollar and a cup. These things meant something to this man. And he was thankful for it. I smiled back at him and replied, That's really good. I'm so glad. You have a great day. And I really love it. It was a couple of weeks after Easter, and that dollar bill was burning a hole in my purse. So I was mindful of it, but hadn't found the, something hasn't, hadn't spoken to me. I was coming home, I was heading home late for one afternoon, uh, driving through the neighborhood nearby, and I passed a lemonade stand. Uh, and I thought, so I passed it, and then I, okay, this is it. So I circled around, and I pulled up. And there were three children operating this one day stand. You know, there was a boy being about eight years old, and I think uh, some of my surmise would be his younger brother, a couple years younger, and a little girl, maybe his sister, but I could also see the mom sort of in the driveway holding the father, watching carefully. So I parked my car and I came over and I said, How's business? And I said, It's good. You want some lemonade? I said, Well, I'm on my way home, I'm going to have supper. Um, 
we didn't know with good wishes and their eyes were. I said, you know what it means to pay it forward? And the little guy goes, you know, and the younger brother said, yes, I do. I said, well, take this dollar and do something with it because it's, it's coming from a good place. And, and you know, they were kind of wide on the three of them. And so I came with the dollar to the older son, to the brother. And the little girl, she, said, she chirped up, she said, do you still want a pretzel? <laughs> So I reached down, I got that last dollar, and I got out of the car, 
I whipped her. She was pulling her across herself. I said, good morning. How are you? Happy Easter. Our priest at St. Luke's asked the priest to the good news. And his smile came over this woman who had been so tight, uptight. She had been, you know, frustrated. She was in a hurry. But this big red came on her face. And I said, thank you so much. And I said, you're in a hurry. You're like, sit down. I've got a lot of kids at home. I've got to do things. Thank you. So I got in the car. And I looked in my, from my windshield at her. She was waving. And she was like, oh. And I thought, you know, Jesus is in It was just a wonderful day. So thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to share my space. It takes a lot to make me speechless, you know? <laughs> credit should go where um, credit deserved. So actually, um, Lars Sullivan was the one who wrote and said, no, it'll be interesting to hear what people do with their dollars, so thanks, Lars, for the idea. Listen, I don't know if you've read the paper this morning or watched news as you were having a cup of coffee and getting ready for, for church, but, but I'm pretty sure if, if you go into your paper, there's some bad news in there. I mean, it, it's, it's a tough time in, in many, many ways. Um, there, there's someone who wrote, and I don't remember who wrote it, but someone who wrote about the challenge of being a Christian is, how is it that we can be Easter people when it seems like we are still living in a Good Friday time? It's not always Good Friday, but it can be rough out there. And yet, as you just heard, we, we have the power to be Easter people. And just to be clear, even though today is the final day of Easter time. It's also the day of Pentecost where we're gifted with the Spirit to do those things that Jesus did during his brief time on this earth. So let us continue to be Easter people as we move through the Good Friday times and through the other times that follow. Amen.